Welcome to Site-Directed Mutagenesis, Day 2. Yesterday, we learned proper pipetting techniques and began the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR process. Today, we will be reviewing the pipetting procedure and performing the final steps of our PCR process. We will also be performing bacterial transformation with our newly created mutated plasmids. Yesterday, we created primers containing a mutation. Then we use that primer in PCR to create millions of mutated plasmids. We will start our procedure today by taking the PCR tube out of the thermocycler to complete the final steps of PCR. Next, we will transform our newly created DNA plasmid with Escheria coli, or E. coli, in order to produce our new fluorescent protein. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is the process of amplifying a small sample of DNA into a larger working sample that can be manipulated and studied. Bacterial transformation is the process of a cell taking in a foreign DNA plasmid and producing the associated proteins coded for by that DNA plasmid. Site-directed mutagenesis is the combination of both these processes to mutate a specific part of a DNA plasmid and then transform it into E. coli to produce the newly designed proteins. Now we are going to transform a bacteria with our GFP plasmid and our mutated plasmid that codes for BFB. Our first step will start by using an inoculation loop to collect some colonies of bacteria from the streaked plate. After that, transfer the bacteria into one of the tubes containing the calcium chloride solution. Twist the loop in the solution until the bacteria is in the solution. Repeat for the other tube. Then pipette all 50 microliters into the tube where your suspended bacteria is. Then pipette 10 microliters of the GFP plasmid into the other microtube. We add calcium chloride to neutralize the charge. Then we place the bacteria on ice to slow the movement of that plasma membrane. Then we place the bacteria in a hot water bath so the plasmid can move inside the bacterial cell. Now we are going to be plating our cells. First you will use a sterile 1 microliter pipette to transfer transformed cells from the tube. Before you place it on your plate, make sure you labeled the plate and drew a line dividing the plate in the middle. We will be placing GFP, our controlled plasmid, and our mutated plasmid on the other side. Spread the cells over the entire platter with a cotton swab. Put your initials or group number on the plates. After that, place your plate in a 37 degrees Celsius bacterial incubation oven overnight to incubate. Tomorrow, we will use a long wave UV light to visualize the transformed cells. Hopefully, you will see bacteria that fluoresces green and blue and yellow. Yesterday, we used site-directed mutagenesis to mutate specific sites on a GFP plasmid. And today, we will transform the mutated and unmutated control plasmids into bacteria.